Warning, The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, the world's most exciting podcast, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, New York Times best-selling author and National Radio Hall of Fame inductee, Michael Savage. I'm here. We feel safe and sound. So many of us coming here is not only say it's safe, but to say thank you for being Chinatown. At the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory, the owner acknowledged sales have fallen by hundreds of dollars per day. No one here, though, is sick or wearing face masks. We want people to care about our small businesses and our survival here. And hopefully they'll take heart and come down here. We've got a lot of great places here for people to see. The owner of the walk shop on Grant Avenue was thrilled when the speaker dropped in and bought a walk. The store has been in business for 52 years, and the power came back on during her visit, which was considered a good sign. That was the best thing she, that you could do. N- not just It's safe. It's wonderful. Uh, we yeah, welcome everyone, go everybody. to Chinatown. Come, Roll in the coming. streets. The walk ended with a stop for lunch. A dim Roll like sum a dim sum on Grand Avenue. Of Chinatown leaders. Mrs. Pelosi was critical of the president's proposal right, to cut $1 already. billion. Dollars. The point uh, is this. Welcome to the show. Um, Pelosi and... Um, I'm sorry to say, no, nothing fake conservatives agree that there's nothing to worry about. Uh, we used to hear about talking points coming down from the White House to uh, the media when Obama was in office, and we mocked it. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, there's a lot to be worried about. And when Pelosi tours San Francisco's Chinatown to show it's safe, and you have once credible conservatives saying the same thing as Nancy Pelosi Then you know what I meant by beware the government media complex when I gave that famous speech in 1998 at the Commonwealth Club right here in San Francisco. Later today, uh, President Trump is going to make a speech about the coronavirus pandemic that is obviously worrying everyone in the world except followers of uh, certain talk show hosts. I'm not sure what he'll say, really, but I think what Limbaugh is saying is almost identical to what the president will be saying, and it's the same talking points. It's not good for the president. It is not good for the president to downplay this. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be panicked, but I am saying you need to be prepared and making the right decisions regarding taking precautions, reasonable precautions to prevent yourself from contracting the coronavirus. I'm not going to play this down like it's no big deal because the White House wants those on the conservative side to say it's no big deal. The numbers don't lie. 80,000 infected that we know of, 2,700 dead. Now, this doesn't include the numbers of cases the Chinese are not telling us about, which could number into the hundreds of thousands. They have portable crematoria going around China, by the way. This should not be a political issue. This should be a medical issue. This is not about President Trump and how it affects him. There is no need to play this down. We saw Democrats last night on stage lying to the American people. We saw Bernie Sanders lying about the wonders of Cuba and communism. And we almost wanted to throw eggs at him for being such a throwback and a case of arrested communist development. But I have a moral obligation to let you know the truth about what's going on to the best of my knowledge. And to warn you, my listeners, how to take proper precautions. Donald Trump should not be and is not the center of every topic on the planet. There are things bigger than the president. And this is one of those things. Like I told you yesterday, first comes hubris, then chaos, then nemesis. Hubris, chaos, nemesis. Playing down this disease could lead to people catching it causing great chaos in the nation it's a bad perfect storm that could be emerging and all i'm saying is be wise and prepare yourself i am not being a doomsayer doomsayer i just want to be good to my audience and i want you to be prepared i'm michael savage and i agree with my monologue or i wouldn't have written it if you want to comment on this the phone number is 855-407-282 But please don't read the talking points that you heard on radio this morning from a high school dropout who knows nothing about epidemiology or disease prevention or control. I spent years in graduate school studying the epidemiology of diseases. It doesn't make me the world's expert, 
but it makes me knowledgeable more so than anybody in the American media today. But I'm not here to grandstand. I'm here to help my listeners see their way through this. And rather than focusing on the coronavirus, which you're going to hear about later on when the president speaks, I want to focus right now about what went on last night. I, I literally watched the entire Democrat debate, and I tweeted all night long. I'm just going to read you some of my tweets. Many of you joined Twitter just for me. And here's what I wrote. Dem debate? I could crush the communists in the first two minutes. Sanders, have you ever created a job or service anyone ever bought? Have you ever created a private sector job? Next tweet. Hey, liar. You and your wife busted out of Vermont College and stole the funds. You should be in prison, not on this stage. Why didn't any of the Democrats put this cheap punk in his place? Why are they treating this communist thief so well? What you're seeing here is cowardice. Then there are others on the stage. I said, hey, Dizzy Lizzy, have you ever created a job or service anyone purchased? Can't you just shut up and listen? Does a being a woman make you superior? You've only been a bureaucrat all your life. Another tweet. Sanders, you lying New York motor mouth. You quote Lancet. It's a left wing organ of the Socialist Party US, uh, USA. They lost all credibility years ago. Sanders, just shut up. Your New York big mouth is dominating the stage. Your rudeness shows how unfit you are to run the nation. Why is Steyer, the billionaire liar, allowed on the stage? Poor little howdy duty mayor looks like a kid who should be wearing knickers. Poor old Joe Biden ready for the Democrat glue factory. Why don't the moderators put a large cork in Sanders' big New York motor mouth? You know, I, I thought of the cork because I knew someone who went into acting, who tried to be an actor, and he went to the Stella Adler School of Acting in New York. And he told me the first thing the teacher did to him was take out a gigantic cork and tell him to put it in his mouth. Apparently, Sanders never went to the Stella Adler School of uh, Acting. Somebody should have put a big cork into that lying vermin's mouth. Every time I mute the sound, I looked at the screen. There was the loudmouth lying communist fraud shouting and waving his puny arms. And I said, CBS is throwing it to the Sandman. CBS equals committed to Bernie Sanders. Why do all the Dems oppose voter ID? They are the party of illegal aliens and other deadbeats. Bloomy wants to ban obesity. Nanny state usher. No soda, no hot dogs, no ice cream, no chips, no alcohol, no candy. Sanders wants to legalize all drugs so more millions can be stoned and ignorant. Sanders just said African-Americans should become sellers of marijuana working for the government. Can't get more racist than that. Sanders loved Cuba under murderer Castro. Buttigieg nailed him for worshipping the 60s revolutionary governments. Made his beady eyes more beady, his face even more beat-like. Spoke to a top cardiologist about lying Bernie. I said communist haters must produce an unknown enzyme which protects them from a second heart attack, even when agitated. Would make for a good PhD dissertation, by the way. Sanders discovered he's Jewish quite recently, and yet he hates Israel. Trump is the greatest friend the Jews have ever had. Poor Joe Biden forgot what he was talking about, went silent and blank. Am I the only one who sees he is sen senile? It's very sad, by the way, watching him. His family should take him off the stage. Bloomberg, too meek to run a dog shelter. Dogs would pee on his shoes. He would pat them and forgive them. Sad. And by the way, my last tweet last night. What is that small pin on Comrade Sanders' lapel? Is it the Order of Heroic Soviets? The Fidel Castro Medal of Propaganda? The Cardiology Medal of Hubris? The Medal of Slavery? The Joker? If it was me on the stage, I would have pummeled him into a, into a pile of what he is. By the way, there's an article that I found in the Jerusalem Post that's not being reported here in America that I put on michaelsavage.com. For all of you who love Israel, 347 rabbis have signed a letter rejecting Bernie Sanders' the derogatory, hateful comments about Netanyahu and Israel. Horrifying to believe this man can say a thing like this. Yasser Arafat didn't even have the gall to attack Israel and Jews the way Bernie Sanders is attacking Israel and Jews. This is the Savage Nation, 855-400-7282. If you want to talk about the coronavirus, if you want to talk about know-nothings, 
in the media, disseminating government propaganda, telling you there's nothing to worry about uh, on the same page as Nancy Pelosi. If you want to talk about the debate last night, we can do that. Uh, We have other topics I'm going to do for you today. I'm going to read you a piece, and I know you didn't expect this, from my new book, which will be out in October. I know I said I wouldn't do one more, but I was talked into doing one more. Its working title is Trump's War Two. I'm trying to get the president elected, and then after he's elected, he's going to have a huge four years of a war. And since I wrote Trump's War way back after he was elected and it became number one on the New York Times list, my publisher asked me to do another one. And I'm going to talk about socialism and authoritarianism on the Savage Nation today. Be right back. The Savage Nation. It's Savage On Demand. Hey, let me ask you, are racing thoughts overtaking your night of sleep? Are you tired of not being able to sleep? Do you have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep? Oh, I'm tired. Well, when it's time to go to bed, are racing thoughts keeping you awake? If so, it's time for you to try EBB. Ebb, what is it? If you've tried everything from pills to pillows with little success, it's time for you to try Ebb. But what is Ebb? Ebb is the first and only wearable drug-free solution that targets the root cause of sleeplessness, those racing thoughts. Ebb Sleep is a wearable solution that fits over the forehead and gently and precisely cools the forehead to reduce those racing thoughts to allow people who are suffering from sleeplessness to drift more comfortably into a deeper, more restorative sleep. The mind's normal way of dealing with stress and challenges is to be on guard or more vigilant and more aroused. That's the reverse of what's needed for a restful night of sleep. Ebb's cooling, calming nature is designed to counteract the way the mind-body reacts to stressful situations, allowing one to reach restorative sleep quicker so they can be at peak performance the next day. Have the energy to do the things you love again by getting the sleep you need. Ebb's natural solution has no morning side effects and allows you to get back to your peak performance. Here's the good news. Our listeners can now try Ebb risk-free for 60 nights to confirm that it's the solution. How? Try Ebb risk-free for 60 nights by going to tryeb.com slash savage. T-R-Y-E-B-B dot com slash savage. It's simple. Tryeb.com slash savage. Order today to get the sleep you need and deserve. Tryeb.com slash savage. That's T-R-Y-E-B-B dot com slash savage. And get that night's sleep you need. Well, there was Nancy Pelosi touring Chinatown saying it's perfectly safe to uh, eat dum sum. It used to be called dim sum. But after she toured Chinatown, they changed it to dum sum. And this is perfectly safe. Go through Chinatown and eat dim sum. It's very good for you. Eat dim sum. Very good. Go to Chinatown. Buy a trinket. <laughs> buy a trinket in Chinatown and, and, and buy a walk and then eat some dim sum. It's perfectly safe, says Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> the whole thing is crazy. Crazy. I mean, I myself have not been over the Golden Gate Bridge. I was over once this weekend. Last Friday night, I went to Aliotos. It's true. I know the owner. I know the chefs. I know the kitchen. Uh, but other, I don't go to China. I used to like Chinatown. I'm sorry. I Call me ignorant. You know, I ask myself, how many of the people were just in China? How many came back and are asymptomatic? But that's true for a lot of places today, not just Chinatown. You know, I don't shake hands. I haven't for a long time. I do the ghetto fist bump. People say an older white guy doing a fist bump. They smile. I said, yeah, in an age of coronavirus uh, and flu, I don't I don't shake hands. And what's intriguing about that is that in ancient China, because of epidemics that spread throughout China, the people don't shake hands. You remember they would shake their own hand. There was a Chinese image of a man shaking his own hand underneath his robes up and down. That came from the epidemics that were prevalent at the time. People were commonsensical and they didn't shake hands like we do in dumb America. Where you let some a, a big grotesque man try to break your hand to prove how tough he is. 
I don't understand men. Why do they have to break a woman's hand when they shake her and they show how macho and how potent they are? Women should never shake a man's hand. Say, it's not my custom. You'll, you'll throw them off. If you get an idiot who wants to crush your finger to show you how tough he is, don't let him shake your hand. But nevertheless, I don't, I don't shake hands. I fist bump. Now, if you'd want to smoke a cigar and shake hands and kiss someone from China, go ahead. Make my day. I don't care what you do. I know what I'm doing. I load it up on vitamin C supplies. You know that almost all our vitamin C is made in China today. Did you know that? What are you going to do when they cut it off? I'm a vitamaniac. I've been on vitamins for 40 years. It staved off things for 40 years. Not all things. I would have died 30 years ago had I not gone into nutrition. I modified my diet 30, 40 years ago. It kept me very healthy. But hey, eventually, you know, after many a summer dies the swan. After many a summer, the swan gets sick. And I could look at it as a failure, but I could look at it as a great success. My poor dad died in his 50s, my grandfather in his 40s, and I went back to look at what happened in the old world. Great-grandfather died in his 30s. I had a very bad genetic, uh, you know, roulette wheel thrown at me on the male side. So I went into the health field as a researcher, not as a practicing physician. And I traveled through regions of the world trying to find the answers to these things. I've been obsessed with health and disease ever since I'm a little kid. I've been a professional in this field of research to do with diseases for many, many decades. And uh, the coronavirus is definitely bigger than you may think. And if you're being misled by once credible conservatives, don't say I didn't warn you. When you see once credible conservatives taking the same exact position as Nancy Pelosi, then you understand what I mean by beware the government media complex. This should have nothing to do with politics. And I, I wrote a little pamphlet years ago called Diseases Without Borders. Maybe that was the statement that needs to be remembered. Diseases Without Borders. They just found a case at LAX on a flight stewardess from Korea. Two died in Japan. You want to put your head in the sand and smoke a cigar? Be my guest. Michael Savage, a host like no other. Okay, you know I'm a car guy. You know I've had a Hellcat. And with the ever-increasing numbers of cars like Dodge, BMW, and Volkswagen, and models like the Hellcat, X3, and Jetta, it's now impossible to stock all the parts you need in a traditional chain storefront. We all know that. I'm a car guy. And I'm telling you, why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while a counterman orders the parts on his computer, choosing the only brand his warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com right in your home and in your pocket. One reason to repair and maintain your cars is to save money that you can then use for other important things like the mortgage or food. Why would you choose to spend 30%, 50%, 100% more for the exact same auto parts in a chain store or new car dealership when you could do it at home on your own computer? Now, you may not know this, but chain stores have different price tiers for professional mechanics and do-it-yourselfers. RockAuto.com's prices are the same for everybody, and reliably low they are. RockAuto.com always offers the lowest prices possible, rather than changing prices based on what the market will bear like airlines do. RockAuto.com is for everybody and does not require membership or account login. Does not require this. You could just do it yourself. RockAuto.com is a family business, serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Just go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything from engine control modules and brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet sets. Whether it's for your classic or daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered right to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. You can quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and prices you prefer. But best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write SAVAGE in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. That's S-A-V-A-G-E. They have an amazing selection, reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need 
Don't stand online in an auto parts store and wait for the hostile clerk to get back to you. Go to rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Rock Auto. All the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Despite the reality that these masks will not stop a person from contracting coronavirus, HHS Secretary Alex Azar says the government needs to stockpile 300 million N95 respirators for use by health service workers, according to Business Insider. 300 million are being stockpiled by the government, and yet... um, A once credible talk show is telling you there's nothing to worry about. Don't panic. It's all a conspiracy by the liberal media to destroy Trump. I I never heard anything like this. I have never lived through such a a state where naked propaganda is being passed off as reality. How stupid can you be? Our own government is stockpiling 300 million N95 respirators for use by health service workers. And yet propagandists for the government are saying, don't worry, there's nothing to worry about. An N95 is a designation for a respirator that filters 95% of small and large airborne particles when worn properly, according to the CDC. I have a couple of masks. I don't know what they are even. I, I don't wear them. I'm not walking around with a mask yet, like someone in the Japanese subway. I live in an isolated place. I don't really shake hands. I, I went in Safeway, I told you the other day, a guy was coughing, one of the clerks, coughing into the bags as he was checking out, checking people out. He shouldn't have been in there, but the unions control these companies, are afraid to say a word to these stupid workers. And they're gouging. Masks that cost a few dollars a few weeks ago are now being sold for $11,000 on eBay. I swear it to God. Profiteers on eBay are selling masks from $40 to $1,000 for common 3M brand masks that you can find for a few dollars. And respirator masks are being sold for up to ten or $11,000 by a filthy, disgusting profiteers that should be thrown into prison. Unbelievable to me what can go on in, a, in, you say, a free market. You know, there's a limit to a free market. This shouldn't be allowed. No, this shouldn't be allowed at all. I'm sorry. Oh, let the market determine, Mike. Be a free marketeer. Let the market determine it, Mike. Brainwashed. Uh, Common sense, avoid certain places, avoid crowds, don't go to movie theaters. I'll even say don't go to sporting events and stadiums. Okay, you want me to, oh, you're panicking people. No, Mike, it's my right as an American to sit in a crowded movie theater. And I have a right to go to a ball game. Take me out to the ball game, Mike. I'm a red-blooded American. I want to smoke a cigar and get the coronavirus. That's my damn business, not your business. Sophisticated liberal that you are only liberals fear this disease real conservatives are not afraid of it a real conservative would go into chinatown right now and kiss a patient just to show that they're tough and not afraid it's a serious issue flight attendant working on lax test positive drudge report cancellations mark ash wednesday in time of virus it's uh, worldwide, and of course, everyone's panicking. No one knows as much as Rush Limbaugh. He knows more than everybody on the planet. He knows more than Italy. He knows more than Korea. Uh, it's astounding, you know, believe who you want to believe. Meanwhile, here in America, we have a perfect storm brewing for a throwback like Bernie Sanders to wind up in the presidency. If, if you can believe this can happen here, you're mistaken. There is a perfect storm brewing. That a throwback con man like Bernie Sanders, like this, a racist pig like Bernie Sanders, a con man, a bum, a criminal, a mook, a bum. Him and his wife should be in prison for what they did to the Vermont College. And, you know, I I curse CBS. I have nothing but contempt for the so-called idiotic moderators. They should have shut that idiot down. And those on the stage, you can just show you how weak they are. Bloomberg looked like a Pets, a Schmendrick, a Putz. How did he make so many billions of dollars? He didn't get lucky. He's a smart man to manage a company like that. He's worth $58 billion with that kind of meek personality. Elizabeth Warren looks like the type, if I was casting a concentration camp movie, she'd be like one of the chief guards. She has that look, doesn't she? That, that, uh, that, that look, you put her in a uniform, 
She has that na- that nasty look. Uh, Joe uh, ready for the glue factory. Didn't know where he was. He went blank. He didn't know where he was. I, I said, no, he's not doing this. And he says, why am I stopping? Why am I stopping when all the others are talking? And he looks around. This is, this is sad. Do you understand that this is senility? It's dementia. It's a form of dementia. You're watching a man who has dementia on the stage. The family should take him in and say, Joe, it's okay. You can stop now. You can go live on Lake Carefree. We bought you a nice cottage on a Carefree Lake, Joe. You never have to go out again and work for the Democrat Party. And he would look with this, you know, sad eyes blinking. And you just take him by the arm and you walk Grandpa Joe Biden out to the lake and you sit him down. You get him an attendant, a nurse. You get him a a Netflix uh, subscription, scotch, whatever he likes. And you let him pass his years and... You don't put him up there in front of 13 million viewers to go blank like that. Bloomberg, are you joking? I never saw anyone run ads for themselves during a debate. How is that even legal? I thought I was seeing things. Here on the West Coast, I'm watching the debate, and there's ads for Bloomberg in between the breaks. Buttigieg looked like a kid who needed a pair of shorts or knickers. He looked, he looked like he was the amazing shrinking candidate. He got smaller and smaller with stupid, inappropriate smilings. Steyer makes me angry. I get angry at Steyer. He's such a lying pig. He made his fortune in uh, private prisons. Now he's now he's against prisons and he's against this and he's for blacks that should have this and Hispanics should have that. Everyone's a racist who's white but him. Uh, Klobuchar, I actually like. She looks like a very reasonable, intelligent woman. Presidential? Not really, but intelligent, reasonable, rational. This woman would be a good leader for the Democrat Party, not the other idiots up there. The hate and the lies, that's the best they could do. CBS should be put out of business for 30 days for what they did, throwing it to Bernie. Clearly, they threw it to Bernie. CBS, clearly Bernie Sanders. That's what it stands for now. Why did they let that man go on and on? You know, he dominated. The, they didn't shut him up. He overrode everybody. That bum, that mook, that street filth. That soapbox bombastic pig. How could you glorify the, the, the devastation of Castro's Cuba and get away with it? How can you do this when everybody knows what a liar he is, that pig Bernie Sanders? In a letter to Democratic National Committee Chairman, the racist Tom Perez, four former Cuban political prisoners condemned Bernie Sanders for praising the late dictator Castro. Now, Sanders told 60 Minutes over the weekend that it was unfair to quickly condemn Cash program. I heard this, by the way, in the 60s from a communist doctor in Hawaii. I kept hearing how great the health care was under Castro. What you don't know, and what former political prisoners have pointed out in their letter, Cuba had high literacy rates and was the region's wealthiest country before the 1959 Cuban Revolution. That's right. Under the dictator Batista, they had higher literacy rates. And along with the collapse of the economy under Fidel Castro, the murderous monster, the Cuban people suffered the mass murder of thousands of dissidents. Many were imprisoned in gulags in Cuba. They all lost their freedom. And four of the former political prisoners who served years in Castro's prisons, enduring tortures, beatings, solitary confinement, inhumane treatment, cannot believe that a presidential candidate in America dared to praise a tyrant who shed so much blood of innocent Cubans. The letter was signed by Luis Zuniga, Ernesto Diaz, Angel Difana, and Jorge Luis Garcia. They said that after 61 years of socialism, the average income in Cuba is $20 a month. That's below the dollar a day set by the World Bank as the lowest level of subsistence. That's what Sanders is glorifying. The dissidents pointed out that Cuba had 12 universities and an 87% rate of literacy before Castro. There was no need for a literacy program. They said there was no literacy program, like the lying pig criminal Sanders said. What he imposed was a political indoctrination program that is the core of the political educational system in Cuba. There's much more that I can tell you about it. And the former prisoners of Castro said the sufferings of the Cuban people under the socialist regime of the Castro brothers has been so intense and long 
that the least remedy for Mr. Sanders' indolence is a public apology. Good luck. Sanders is not capable of an apology. Sanders doesn't know how to shut his filthy New York mouth. It can only be shut for him. And someone has to do this to him. You know, I told you a few weeks ago, the president called me on my iPhone. I was very honored. And he asked about me and my health and how I was and congratulated me on my streaming ratings. And he asked me who I thought was going to win. And I said, Sanders, this was four weeks ago. And he said, not Bloomberg. I said, no, he doesn't have the, the capacity. I said, Bloomberg looks good in his ads, but in person he looks very weak. I said, it's going to be Bernie. I then said to the president of the United States of America on my phone, I said, Mr. President, when you debate this guy, don't come out too hard because if you attack him, you'll look like a bully attacking an old man who had a heart attack. He didn't say anything. I discussed it with someone who's younger than me and much wiser than me. And he said, you're wrong, Dad. He said, no, he's got to crush him like the bug he is immediately. He's got to step on him and squash the blood out of him. He's got to come out and hit him so hard that Sanders' jaw drops and he falls to the floor. Well, we'll have to see what the president decides to do. When uh, Ms. Gilfoyle was on the show a few weeks ago, I said, if the president wants to do a role play with someone acting as Bernie Sanders, I can certainly do it for him. I could do a better job than, uh, than Larry David. I, I could be the foil to President Trump on, on, a, on a role play. I mean, they, they, could do, they could do it without me, but I could do it better than anybody because I got the voice down. And I know what Bernie Sanders is going to say to him. I can tell you, I can read the playbook of this communist filth. Trump should simply attack him on his own words. Trump should simply attack him on the fact that he's never created a job or service that anyone ever needed. Someone should attack him and Trump should be the one to attack this filthy, degenerate scum. I, I, you don't know what I, I see. I know who Bernie Sanders is. I fled New York in 1967 or 68 to get away from filthy communists like this. They were everywhere in the city. They were the worst people on the planet. They are the worst people on the planet today. And if you think he can't win, I disagree with you. The Savage Nation. It's savage, uncut, unfiltered, and raw. sounds muted it's because I'm wearing an N95 uh, respirator mask to protect myself from you and to make sure that we don't spread the disease around the world on this show which is heard around the world I'm trying to make a light joke out of a ser very serious topic I'm not suggesting you walk around with a mask but do you know people are gouging for thousands of dollars for a thing that costs a few cents <laughs> luckily uh, we got a bunch of them through Irene, who's been taking care of Teddy and the other dogs for so many years. I don't know where Irene got these from. It's an N95, no less. Uh, do I hear $100? Do I hear $110? $110, $110, $110, $110. Do I hear $120, $120, $120? $120? No, not for sale. And we got to laugh our way through it, but we don't have to be morons about it. We don't have to be like idiots who flunked out of high school, who don't know anything about reality and think everything is a conspiracy against Trump. That's stupid. The world is taking precautions. If you choose not to take precautions, don't blame me if you should contract this particular strain of coronavirus. And by the way, it may be much worse than the governments are telling us because I think it's a bioengineered virus that escaped the laboratory. The Westwood One Podcast Network. Fans of the spoken word, welcome. This is a podcast. Greetings, pod recipients. You are entering the Savage Nation. Read the book. See the movie. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. 
And now, the world's most exciting podcast, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, New York Times best-selling author and National Radio Hall of Fame inductee, Michael Savage. We have a criminal justice system today that is not only broken, it is racist, got more people in jail than any other country on earth, including China. And one of the reasons for that is a horrific war on drugs. Yeah. So I do believe that on day one, we will change the Federal Controlled Substance Act, which, if you can believe it, now equates heroin with marijuana. That's insane. We're going to take marijuana out of that and effectively legalize marijuana in every state in the country. What we are also going to do is listen move to, to expunge now. the records listen. of Wait, those listen. people who are arrested for possession of marijuana. Wait, it gets and I'll tell you what else we're going to do. Listen. We're going to provide help to the African-American, Latino, Native American community to start businesses to sell legal marijuana rather than let a few corporations control the legalized marijuana market. So communist Bernie is going to... Um I, this is about the most racist thing I've ever heard in my life. And no one pounced on him. The weaklings and the weaklings up there didn't say one word to him. They could have they could have pounded him into the ground and said, you want to turn minority kids into drug peddlers? What is wrong with you, Bernie? You're not, what are you saying? That's all they're capable of doing? Or since they're doing it illegally, let them do it legally now? And what are you going to do? Put Maxine Waters, the Crips and the Bloods in charge of Bernie's community drug sales? No one said that to him. That's why I'm on talk radio and they're running for office. I never saw anything like this. The man is such a racist bum. Then about Israel. It's a very sensitive issue for me. For this man who de denied being Jewish, he said that he was born of Jewish parents, but he denies any religious affiliation. This was his life story for years. It was only two years ago that this communist bum suddenly found that saying he was Jewish gave him a sum of protexia. The only reason he said he's Jewish is he can use it as a weapon now against people who would criticize him, and they could call him anti-Semites. I know the game. I know this kind of filthy street bum. Listen to this now. This is the most insulting use of a religion I've ever heard in clip one. I am very proud of being Jewish. I Jewish. actually lived Jewish. in Israel for some months. But what I happen to believe is that right now, sadly, tragically, in Israel, through Bibi Netanyahu, you have a reactionary racist who is now running that country. I hope and Mossad I happen to believe, heard this. I happen to okay, believe. I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want to hear anymore. If there really was a Mossad that was so dangerous, fill in the paragraph. 347 rabbis signed letter rejecting Bernie Sanders' outrageous comments. It came out in the Jerusalem Post, not picked up by CBS, NBC, ABC, or the DNC nor the RNC, was also, uh, frankly, dead on their feet. For him to attack Netanyahu in that manner is astounding to me. For him to attack AIPAC in that manner is not only astounding, but it's openly racist. These were not shameful. They were not outrageous. They were not unusual. This is a man <clears throat> who is the most dangerous uh, man in modern American history for the Jewish people, not only for what he is saying, but because of the anti-Semitism he is provoking by being a naked Marxist and now declaring it that he is also Jewish. It's not only about Israel. It's about him using his, quote, Jewishness as a weapon to protect himself against political attacks. He's very, very clever. Very clever indeed. And while he was supporting Cuba last night, they could have drilled him into the ground. Buttigieg, who is very proudly gay, uh, for whatever that's worth, could have said to him, Bernie, isn't it true that Fidel Castro arrested homosexuals and put them on a separate island off the coast of Cuba during the AIDS epidemic? He could have pounded this punk into the ground. He could have turned him into blood sausage. And none of them are capable of it. Either they're incapable of it or they're political ignoramuses. Nobody has taken Bernie Sanders on in the proper manner. He's a filthy, dirty street fighter. That's the only one who's going to beat him is Donald Trump, who has to come out now and crush him like an orange in an orange juice press. And I will help the president with lines to to destroy him. We're also talking about uh, the coronavirus. We're living in a very strange time. We know about the propaganda of the left. 
We uh, ridicule it all the time. We ridicule it rightly when uh, Bernie Sanders glorifies Fidel Castro. We ridicule Pelosi for downplaying the filthy bums in the streets of San Francisco and the uh, corruption in San Francisco. We rightly do that. But now we have once credible talk show hosts who call themselves hard rock conservatives saying the same thing as Nancy Pelosi, that there's nothing to worry about with the coronavirus, that it's all hype. It's shocking. It's terrifying to think that so many millions of you actually believe this now because of the propaganda. Do you understand that not everything that happens on the earth has to do with Donald Trump? Can you comprehend for one second that the world doesn't revolve around this one man? As much as I admire Donald Trump, as much as I support Donald Trump, as much as I am writing a new book to help him when he wins the election to get through the following four years, the whole world doesn't revolve around this one human being. Diseases have no borders. They do not discriminate between liberals and conservatives. They don't care if you're a communist or a, a capitalist. And so to turn this into a political discussion as Limbo has been doing, is, is actually revolting to me. And to me, it's not even about Limbo. It's a symptom of the bigger problem. It's a symptom of the true believer. It's a symptom of those of you who like my show and like my raw independence and yet refuse to understand that there are deceptions happening on both sides of the aisle. And in a time of a of an epidemic that is on the verge of becoming a pandemic. Uh, yesterday, for the first time, the number of cases outside of China exceeded those in China for the first time yesterday. It's on the verge of being a pandemic. Every government on earth is racing to contain it. And yet ignoramuses, high school dropouts with big audiences are telling you, don't worry. The whole thing is a, a construct to get Donald Trump. How can you believe this? How? How can you listen to this without getting as outraged as I am? Let's take some callers. Dave in Petaluma, welcome to the program. What's your topic? My topic is uh, these bags that uh, people drag into the stores, uh, the little uh, cloth bags for the groceries. Oh, yes, the reusable bags. Uh, tell uh, Now, you're a bioweapons expert, Dave, I understand. From, from the old days, <laughs> back in the upper 60s. Well, I wouldn't say it's old days. You have your expertise. So tell us what you think about the hippie use of uh, reuse of bags. Well, a uh, paper bag, uh, if you get coronavirus on it, my, my theory is it will last a couple hours. On one of those damp bags that maybe the dog peed on, it's going to last two, three, four days. <laughs> what do you mean? The nice canvas bags that the good liberals in Marin County schlep into a market to show that they're good for the environment? And the, oh, God, How many times have they used the same bag to take home wet? You know, it's not only groceries. They're putting wet, uh, like, uh, vegetables in there. They won't even use a plastic bag in the market to put a lettuce in or a, a cucumber. They throw it right in the bag, and they don't realize what they're doing is creating a perfect environment for the, for the microbes to grow. I think that's what you're saying. Yes, and I think the, the, way, the reason why our flu epidemics have been going on slowly year after year after year and not having six months, two years in between is this damn, uh, you know, bag issue. It's got to go to one bag, paper bag, one-time use, throw it away. Interesting. Of course, the reusable bag thing is a very dangerous issue that people don't understand. When you reuse a cloth bag, as you just said, you're increasing your risk of transferring micro. My theory is we'll eliminate 60% out of the cog of transferring uh, flu viruses and corona. Take six Let me ask you this. Are these N95 masks of any use? You know, I'm not a, a real expert on the part. I would say probably they're good for catching a, uh, a breathing. Take it off with your hands, and if you don't wash your hands and put it in your mouth, you're going to get get the virus. Right. The, the big, the big hand-to-mouth transfer is the issue. But I understand coronavirus can be transferred to the to the uh, mucosa around the eyes. I would say that's possible. Hmm. Very possible. Well, Dave, I'm honored that a man of your intelligence listens to the show. And thanks for uh, reminding me not to reuse bags in the market. 
<laughs> no, truthfully, I become like a, 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 you know, I become like brainwashed by I'm almost ashamed to ask for a bag now in a market for fear I'm violating the protocols of liberalism in, in, in Marin County. I, I think I'm going to be brave and stand up and say, yes, I'll take a bag. All right, thanks. I'm just trying to uh, carry it forward here. California, Randy, welcome to the program. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Uh, I just want to uh, point out that, you know, there's viruses and bacteria everywhere all around the world. And the one thing that uh, can fight them all off is if you have a fully functioning immune system. And you take viruses. Oh, really? Tell that to the people who are dying from it. I guess they were all not up to your knowledge level. They've got got, uh, deficient immune systems, most of them. That's what people die from. Well, then most of the world has deficient immune systems as well. They should be worried. Absolutely. Uh, you're not. You're not saying we shouldn't take precautions, are you? Fear every day of plastic bags and and touching people. Randy, Randy, Randy. You're not saying that 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 people shouldn't take precautions to avoid contact with this virus, are you? Uh, no, I don't think it's a necessarily something where you you don't uh, you're not vigilant. But I'm not going to walk around in fear all the time of it. No, no, don't be in fear. That would turn you into a, a liberal, wouldn't it? That's right. No, no, be a brave conservative. You should go out and buy cigars, too, and smoke, because smoking doesn't cause disease, right? I'm sorry, what did you say? Does smoking cause disease? Well, the things in it do, probably. Is there a relationship between smoking, for example, and cancer? Yeah, I think there is. You think there is. You don't understand the science of it. You think. You think it's all about what you think? Do you understand that there's... There's fact-based statements rather than opinion? That not everything is a liberal or conservative opinion? Don't you understand that? Yeah, I do. Oh, look, I, I, I give up. I give up. I give up. I just give up. You can't talk to people who don't want to hear it. Uh, Pope is telling Catholics to give up trolling for Lent. I guess that gives all the fly fishermen have to stop going fishing now. They can't go out. You can't. You can't troll on the back of your boat anymore if you're a Catholic. Is that what he means by trolling? Do you mean trolling for fish? What is the Pope talking about? For Lent, give up trolling? How do you give up trolling? What does he mean? Uh, gossip, rumors, title, tittle-tattle, and speak to God on a first-name basis. How would the bouncer know about God? How would a bouncer in a, in a cloak in the Vatican know anything about anything? He says, we live in an atmosphere polluted by too much verbal violence, too many offensive and harmful words, which are amplified by the Internet. Um, I think he, in- he insults the intelligence of the world, by the way, on a daily basis when he speaks about climate of which he knows nothing. In recent years, Francis himself has been the butt of insults from ultra conservative Catholic websites. They're not ultra conservative Catholic websites. They're real Catholic websites. Francis is Lenin's Pope. I got to remind you that Francis is the first non-European picked to be the Pope in 1,200 years. I reminded you of that in my book, Trump's War, where I wrote a whole chapter called Lenin's Pope. Do you understand he was handpicked by the world, New World Order? Do you get that? The same New World Order gave us Obama for eight years. And I'm afraid the same NWO, working with CBS, is all in on Bernie Sanders. The Savage Nation. It's savage on demand. Bernie Sanders, the naked, filthy, degenerate, soapbox communist who is stuck in the past, does not even wear an American flag pin on their left coat, left coat lapel. He wears a little Senate pin to make sure he doesn't have to uh, say anything that glorifies America and the flag. How could you people not see who this beady-eyed Bolshevik is? That's not a bad name for a beady-eyed Bolshevik. Have you seen his eyes? The crazy eyes? This is not crazy Bernie. This is dangerous Bernie, who is using his parents' religion of Jewishness as a weapon against anyone who would attack him for fear of being, oh, you're an anti-Semite. No, no, I'm not an anti-Semite, Bernie. Well, yes, you are. You're a t- no, no, he, he's using his religion as a weapon. The man hadn't been in a synagogue his entire life. Two years ago, he discovered he was Jewish because it worked for him. Even occasional cortex two years ago discovered she had some Jewish blood, she said. Did you see that one? Incidentally, in the next segment, 
You're never going to believe who we have on. We have Miguel Hernandez on, you never heard of. He's just a super in a building in New York, a union member. But guess what? He's going to run against uh, occasional cortex for Congress. Miguel Hernandez, an ordinary man, is going to try and unseat this communist occasional cortex. He's running as a Republican. Can you believe this? He's going to run here in America against this girl, bartender. And I want to find out what his chances are. I hope the Democrats redistrict her district and throw her out of Congress and send her back where she belongs, which is to Cuba. She'd be very popular in Cuba, but she'd be one of millions. She'd be nothing different than the members of the, uh, uh, the brigades that work for the Castro brothers in Cuba. She is clearly like the Khmer Rouge in uh, Cambodia. I have Julie from San Fran who grew up under the Khmer Rouge who says the Dems resemble communists. Julie, I know that. Julie, you know I'm one of the few people in the media who's been talking about the Khmer Rouge for years. I do understand the danger we are in, Julie. Trust me, I am not alone. Michael Savage, a host like no other. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Before we go to our guest, Miguel Hernandez, who's going to run against the occasional cortex, I have to say this. The president is going to speak about the coronavirus in about an hour and a half. I don't know who his advisors are, but if they've told him to say there's no danger, no threat, don't worry, it's just media hype, they're they're not doing him a service. They're doing him a grave disservice. Because at this point, we don't know what is liable to happen as this disease marches through our nation. And he's going to put himself on the edge of a plank. He shouldn't do that. My advice would be to come out and say, while it's not as dangerous as some are saying, we in America, and especially the CDC and the government, are taking it very seriously. We're doing everything we can. That's the approach to take. Not to say it's no threat at all. I don't know who his advisors are on this. But, you know, in every administration, there are Brutuses. I've seen it throughout my career in radio. I've seen Brutuses on local, state, and national levels. I saw it happen to Bob Dole when an advisor told him to go on a treadmill in an undershirt that killed his campaign. I saw it happen to Frank Jordan here in San Francisco when he ran for mayor. And some idiot advisor told him to go in a shower with a rope of dope, a soap of dope on his neck. That was the end of his campaign. There are Brutuses within every administration. That's my opinion. Now let's go to Miguel Hernandez, who's kind enough to join us. We have someone who's going to run against uh, occasional cortex. Mr. Hernandez, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thanks for being with us. Hey, Michael. How are you doing? It is really, I really want to thank you for um, hosting me in your show. I, oh, look, Miguel, I tell you, you got a lot of nerve to run against her because she's very, very uh, uh, popular can you really beat her? I can beat her easily. She has no clue, no idea what she's doing. She's missing in action, and the district is crumbling. And according to um, the, according to the the numbers, she's only terrible thirteen percent, and she won thirteen percent of the vote. I can Miguel. Miguel, you're you're a lifetime resident of the Bronx. I grew up on Longfellow Avenue, by the way. It was a long time ago. So, you know, you can take a boy out of the Bronx, but you can't take the the Bronx out of the boy. But I watched this go on. She's a phony through and through. She's not from the Bronx, is she? No, she's from Westchester, and I can't believe that um, that she got in. I mean, How does she get away with making believe she's from the poor and the working people when she grew up in an architect's home in in, in, uh, Westchester? Are you going to tell people that when you're running? I hope you are. Yeah, I'm going to tell people because uh, we need to take the mask out of her, you know, her face. To show people who she really is. Now you're you're a, you're look. People say what well, you are are a superintendent of a 14 story high rise on Madison and 81st, but you're also, and people should know this: a licensed electrical contractor, a licensed plumbing contractor. You own your own construction company, and you just built a brand new pharmaceutical manufacturing plant in New Jersey. Is that true? Yes, uh, it's called Benkin Pharma. Um, yeah. We're having also uh, we're having a problem with my penicillin. Right now we have the coronavirus, and the coronavirus is taking, uh, taking full hold in this country. And the medication, um, the penicillin, comes straight from China. Right now China has a, a, a supply and demand problem. 
We need to make the penicillins in America. America's what we need. Well, they're not using penicillin to treat coronavirus, but you make a good point. I covered it last Friday uh, on the show. How many people are running against occasional cortex for this ca- for this next election? You're one of them, but aren't you aren't you amongst many? Yes, six. Oh, six. You're running as a Republican, though, correct? Yes. Can a Republican beat her in a Democrat uh, city? I could uh, definitely. I, I am I am a totally blue collar. Um, um, person. I came, I worked hard since 12 years old. I established myself. I came out of poverty and, and I can do many things that she, um, has not done. And for sure, sure, I know I can, uh, I could create jobs. I can, um, bring companies to America. I can help the inner cities and I can, um, uh, um, help open more manufacturers for, um, Miguel, Miguel, where is her money coming from? Who is backing her? I believe we, uh, according to what I'm seeing and hearing, special donor dark money comes from Soros. Oh, no. Him again? Him again. The, the snake is behind her as well? I mean, this snake is everywhere. This snake has been banned from six countries, and he's still, he's still at it. The snake wants this communist liar to run and win again. Now, what we read that the Democrat Party so despises her that they want to redistrict her. Uh, are they going to redistrict the area? I'm not sure if they're going to do it, but all I know is he's stepping on toes. And mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're talking about very serious party politics here, and she seems to spit in everyone's face. I don't know how she's gotten so far. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. I know for sure she's not going to win this election. Okay. Well, I hope you win. I mean, you're the real McCoy, and you're running as a Republican. You're a real businessman. You're a real American success story. Do you want to say something in Spanish to the many Spanish-speaking audience members I have, Miguel? Is there anything you want to say? Quiero decirle a todos ahí en, en el español que yo estoy corriendo contra Alexandre Casicortez. Yo no voy a tomar los pasos que ella toma de bebé, sino yo voy a tomar pasos de adultos. Yo voy a luchar por ustedes, yo voy a, a lograr metas, yo voy a ayudar a ustedes en su futuro y el futuro de los... <laughs> I like. Hey, Miguel, are you from Puerto Rico? Where are you from? My parents are from Puerto Rico, but I was born in the United States. No, but I love your accent. You know, I, I love the differences in accents around America, whether it's in English or in Spanish. And your accent, I, I mean, I grew up in New York, so I understand Puerto Rican Spanish more than I do Mexican Spanish, although I've been living in California so long. You know, Mexican Spanish is, a, is almost a different language, isn't it? Um, but it's almost a different language, but I, I understand. I understand very well what they, they're speaking, saying. Yeah, but the dialect is so different. Miguel, we here at the Savage Nation, how many of us listen to you in New York on the podcast or elsewhere, are all behind you. And we think that you're going to have a real good shot at taking this district back from this evil, evil, evil plant of this internationalist George Soros. Never forget the name, Miguel Hernandez, because I think you're going to be hearing a lot about him uh, in the future. Yeah, another thing I want to say, we also got to save this country from socialism, communism. Right now, it's trying to take a full hold in this country, and we got to stop it at all costs. How do people help you? Where, where's the campaign? Of, uh, how do we send money to you? Uh, to MiguelHernandez.org. So I'll be sorry, to Miguel Hernandez for Congress. Mi- Mi- no, Miguel Hernandez for Congress, right? No, Miguel Hernandez for Congress.org. Miguel Hernandez for Congress.org. Okay, people, you heard it. Miguel, good luck and thanks for taking the time to be with us today on the Savage Nation. It's the first you probably heard of Miguel Hernandez. It's not the last you're going to hear from him. And I hope others pick up on him uh, and they run him uh, on their shows. Let's go back to the coronavirus, the debate. President to hold a press conference in about an hour and a half. And I hope he doesn't make a declarative statement that he will come to regret. Uh, The influenza, by the way, has a zero, a 0.001 to 0.002 mortality rate, while coronavirus has a 0.21 uh, mortality rate in in China, which is 100 times the mortality rate of the flu. And unlike the flu, COVID-19 or corona has a 14 to 30 day transmission window. 
before symptoms show up. There is no comparison that is being made by high school dropouts who have radio shows between the flu and the coronavirus, none whatsoever. Everyone in medicine knows this. Everyone in medicine knows this. Pamela in Tennessee on the coronavirus. Go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation. Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Savage. I wanted to call to tell you, I was listening just a few moments ago when the gentleman was on speaking about uh, a perfectly healthy immune system would fight off the virus. Well, that isn't true. According to, um, I believe it was a, listen to several radio shows during the afternoon, but I believe it was on point dot com, online dot point dot com, um, on point, pardon me, dot com. And it was an official out of Singapore. And uh, there were three doctors that had passed away there. He said the initial doctor that passed away, and I believe this was very possibly the Wuhan hospital where, the, you know, the, one of the main hospitals there in Wuhan, China. But he said the first doctor was the whistleblower, and he was age 24. Uh, didn't mention the second physician's name, but he, uh, excuse me, uh, the second physician's age, but the third physician was age 29, and he just passed away two days ago. And he said, we're trying to figure out these doctors had perfectly healthy immune systems. Mm. He, he said, we're trying to figure out what could have caused this. And he said, at the moment, the only thing we can think of is that these two gentlemen both um, were um, the, the lack of sleep, because I assume they were at the hospital, you know, quite... quite um, lack of sleep definitely, uh, definitely diminishes the immune system's ability to fight foreign invaders. That's true. Yes, sir. Lack of sleep as well as lack of sleep. It was the stress they were under. He said, uh, I guess... The well, there's another possibility, which is that this virus, which is now uh, alleged to have been a, uh, a bioengineered weapon, that escaped from their laboratories is much more than a simple, uh, a simple, let us say, flu-like virus. Absolutely, I, I, thought, I watch a gentleman, Israeli uh, News Live, and he's he's wonderful. Um, um, his name is Stephen, but he was just reporting that they're thinking it was the, um, as you mentioned, the um, uh, bioweapon. That, that's because it's spreading in other countries, and they're trying to confirm that at the moment. But he's thinking, uh, from sources he's been told. Um, he said it's it's most likely the bioweapon. And may I tell you as well, there was an article I was reading here just a, about an hour ago, a Harvard physician um, out of, let's see, his name is Mr. Well, it doesn't matter his name. What, what did he say? Yes, sir. Dr. Gifford-Jones said that uh, he had reported too many people are dying of, uh, needlessly dying of the coronavirus, and he's reporting that the intravenous um, application of vitamin C, whether it be tablet form or you can buy the powder at a health food store. He suggests even two. He said if you even get the flu, if you'll take two thousand mg's. Well, I wrote a book about it called Diseases Without Borders. It was published two years ago, and I've been trying to tell people there are common sense and simple methods they can use to stimulate their immune system, and one of them is using a uh, real uh, uh, powdered vitamin C. I mean, that's nothing new to me. But you also need vitamin A. You need zinc. You need a, a whole slew of nutrients that stimulate the immune system. Yes. I thank you for the call. That's a field I know an awful lot about. I've studied it for years. It doesn't mean I'm going to be immune to this. I could get it and die from it, too. You think I couldn't? I don't go to Chinatown. Uh, I don't, don't make a habit of, you know, shaking hands. I lead a rather isolated life. But, I, you know, two weeks ago, I got food poisoning here in a restaurant where I live. I don't know how I got it. I don't know who touched what. Or I could have got it in a supermarket. For all I know, you know, I'm the kind of guy I shop and while I'm shopping, I, I touch everything, right? I have to touch a package to pick it up. I touch a shot. You know what I do with a shopping cart? You know, laugh at me. I wear gloves in a, in a supermarket. And I'm like a nutcase, right? I wear a, gloves as I push the cart. If I forgot the gloves, as I did yesterday, I take those wipes that they use and I put it on the handle. I don't know what snotty kid just dribbled on that cart or who, what they touched of their, their behind and then they touched the cart. Or they sneezed in their hand and touched the card handle. Do you have any idea what we're talking about here? These are commonsensical things that you can do. But 100% protection? Absolutely not. You can't live in a, in, a, in a cocoon. You can't stop living. I didn't say that. You take common sense precautions. If you think you're getting something, take uh, bowel tolerance levels of vitamin C, which Dr. Cathcart, an old friend of mine who passed away, taught the world about. Bowel tolerance levels of vitamin C. That doesn't mean... A measly little 50 grams or 100, uh, 50 milligrams or 100. We're talking about bowel tolerance levels. 
I've been teaching people this for 20 years along with vitamin A and people say, God, the flu, I had the flu years ago. I got over it in a day or two because of you. So that was then. That was with that variety of the flu. So let's say this is a more virulent form of the common flu. Whatever you want to say about it, the same rules still apply. Uh, hygiene, common sense, avoiding crowds, don't go to movie theaters, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't touch strangers' hands. Uh, don't kiss strangers. Do I have to tell you that in San Francisco? Right, that's going to really play well. Um, don't hug strangers. Remember the old image that I told you about earlier in the show today of the Chinese in the ancient times? They would put their two hands together inside their big sleeves and shake their own hand when they met a stranger and bow. Why do you think they shook their own hand? Why do you think they didn't shake hands? Because they didn't want to transfer the epidemics that were prevalent in China at that time. So I'm telling you, you can stop certain common sense meth, uh, common sense. You can do certain common sensical things that will increase uh, your chances of avoiding this new uh, illness. And uh, they would be don't shake hands of strangers. Now, schools worry me a lot. You know, kids come home from schools even with normal flu season. Kids are reservoirs, vast reservoirs of uh, viruses and bacteria and whatnot that they pick up in schools. It's an issue for young parents to be very, very careful with your kids, not only for their health, but for your own health. Now, what do you do with a kid who comes home from a school? Again, common sense. You're going to laugh at me. Take your shoes off before you enter the house. I had a dumb doctor friend years ago. And he came to my house after he got out of medical school. He was a real moron. He thought he knew everything. And he was wearing paper shoes to show everyone he had gone to medical school and he was in a hospital. And I said, Bob, take your shoes off, please, before you come in the house. I have young kids. And he laughed at me. He's all, oh, come on now. Why don't I take my shoes off? I said, because you're transferring pathogens from the floor of the hospital into my house. He didn't even know the basics of, uh, of, of disease prevention coming out of the hospital. So don't wear shoes in the house. That's a Japanese custom. Don't shake hands with strangers. Don't kiss strangers. I don't have to tell that. Most of you don't get a chance to kiss strangers. I'll be right back. Home of borders, language, culture, the Savage Nation. Well, the Ash Wednesday program is coming to a conclusion. If you have missed any of my wit and wisdom today, you can catch it, of course, uh, uh, on the podcast, which is posted an hour after the show. I had a call from the White House last night, and they told me they listen to the podcast every day. I didn't say the president does, but there are those who do, really high up. I said, I'm glad to hear that although I am not on every station in the country, as are some great Americans, I am heard everywhere, and I have the number two streaming radio show in talk in the United States of America. So it just shows you that the truth has a way of getting out, and... Um, podcast is going to be good. President's speech and coronavirus. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here with my hands praying. Crossed. Crossed. The Westwood One Podcast Network. 